Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be bad dating advice. Well, I've got an email here from a guy who found me after, I guess he found another, uh, I guess a dating coach, somebody that specializes only in dating. And they were obviously cheaper, and he thought it would he would listen to what this person said, did a phone session with them. And then he later came across my work after he realized that what he was told to do was not fucking working for him. And so he shares the things that this other dating coach told him to do. And it's like, I mean, the, the things that this person, he didn't mention who it was, but the things that this person told him to do is like, you is basically the exact opposite of the things that I teach. And just totally made him look like a weak supplicating fucking beta male and so not only did he fail to get his ex back but obviously she lost a hell of a lot of respect for him as a man which you'll see in a second so i got a quote that i wrote and we'll go through his email and explain why these things he was told to do are not the appropriate and right way to go about it the quote says Masculinity is seeing your own value, speaking your truth without fear, going for what you want without apology, and striving to continually improve so you can perpetually be the best version of yourself. Alphas know their own worth and won't tolerate disrespect or drama in their inner circle. Your peer group and their expectations have more influence on your self-perception and potential than you realize. Only spend your time with people who are good for you, good to you, and who nurture, encourage, and support your grandest goals and dreams. If you're hanging out with a bunch of losers that have no goals and no ambition in life, but yet you do, every time you tell them about your plans, they're going to try to sandbag them because you're going to make them feel uncomfortable and recognize that they're not doing anything to help themselves and if they can sandbag your dreams and get you to be just like them then guess what that keeps them in their comfort zone and makes them feel like they made the right choices because you actually give them social proof by sticking around and putting up with their bullshit and their negativity you literally validate their bad choices by in essence adopting their bad choices and mindset as your own so let's go through this guy's particular email. He says, hey, Coach Wayne, I hope you're doing well. I've recently found your videos and wish I had sooner. If I had a dollar for every time that somebody said, I wish I'd found your book or your work sooner, I'd be a lot richer than I am. I appreciate you reading this and wanted to make sure my question below is in bold and understood. And maybe you can make a video for us suckers who took some bad get, ex get your ex back advice. Just to give you some background, my situation is this. I was dating a girl for a little over two years, and I broke up with her before Christmas of last year. Dick move, I know. And I reunited with her when she called me in March of this year. We were together again for another three to four months, when at the end of June, she ended things with me. Uh, maybe she got in touch. Maybe she started watching my videos. A month and a half later, I was in complete no contact during this time. She has a new boyfriend. Odd, but I do remember checking her phone maybe a week before the breakup and seeing a message from a guy with a similar name from a dating website. Oh, so she was cheating on you. Swell. When asked, she said she had just forgotten to delete the account and she was on it before we reunited. Sure. I'm sure she forgot to delete the account. That sounds totally legit. <laughs> I, being a gullible fool, believed her. Well, shit. Should have seen it coming as this girl had more red flags than a Chinese military parade. That's actually pretty funny. Anyways, as you know, there was a ton of bad advice out there on YouTube. When I found out she was dating another man, I booked a coaching session with an expert that suggested... I write, write a handwritten letter, not stating that I want her back, but how I recognize how she felt neglected by me. He says I hadn't been spending time with her and what I was doing to make myself a better man. So 
the important thing, it's like if I was doing a phone session with this guy, what I would be reminding him of is that you dumped her back in December for whatever reason, what, you know, during the holidays or not, and you didn't even consider getting back together with her until she got in touch with you in March. And what's the re- real reason why you went back out with her is because you hadn't found anybody better yet. That's the real reason. And the only reason that you care now is because she blew you off for another guy. Remember, rejection breeds obsession. So the reality is if you think back to how you were thinking and feeling about her back when you dumped her, you obviously weren't that into her. And the only reason you got back together, if you're being honest with yourself, is because you hadn't found anybody better. You settled. And then when she rejected you, now you're like, oh my God, I really got to get this girl back. I really, this is the woman of my dreams. This is why most of the time when the guys get the ex back, they don't stick with their long term, especially after they come across my work and read my first book, How to Be a 3% Man, which you can read for free on my website by subscribing to the newsletter. And you can also get the audiobook for free by doing an audible free trial. Is that when you read the book and you apply it, not only do you see all the mistakes that you made in the past, but as you start to implement it, you recognize that you can actually get better quality women than you've ever had in your life. The kind of women that set your soul on fire and that you actually love hanging out with and you have a great fucking time with. And you're not walking around feeling like you're having to settle and you're just kind of playing a role, which a lot of us tend to do that, myself included when I was younger. When you don't think you deserve better, you're going to tolerate mediocrity. And if you tolerate mediocrity in your personal life, you'll tolerate it in your career. You'll tolerate it in your business. You'll tolerate it in your family. You'll tolerate it in your peer group. You'll tolerate it in your body. You'll tolerate it in your lifestyle. And that's the kind of thing that eventually causes you to lose hope and give up on your dreams. And when you lose hope, you basically got one foot in the grave. And so think about it. The strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. So you take this girl back. She's basically cheating on you behind your back, lining up a new dude. And then she blows you off and lies to your face and says, oh, I I just forgot to delete that app. And then she dumps you a few weeks later and ends up with this guy who just happened to be somebody she was talking to when you guys weren't together. So she was obviously lining up your fucking replacement. That's not the kind of woman that is a great girlfriend material. Women with a healthy self-esteem, when they recognize the relationship is over and they're not feeling it anymore, they have the confidence and the inner strength and the high self-esteem that they look forward to being single again. They look forward to getting back to being who they were and hanging out with their girlfriends and taking some time to be single. And then when they're ready, they'll start dating again. Girls, women that are insecure have to always have a guy in their life. They get their validation from having a man in their life. And that's, so when you look at it from that perspective, she totally dicked you over. So for you to reach out and pursue somebody after they dicked you over, you're communicating that that's an acceptable way to treat you. And you're inviting them to do more of that. Remember, no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. So you don't, in, you don't validate their bad choices. And when somebody like this, if I was doing a phone session, I'd say, she's a great fuck buddy, friends with benefits, maybe somebody to have an open relationship with, but she ain't girlfriend or wife material. Because obviously she doesn't value loyalty. She doesn't value commitment. And probably is not that great of a communicator either. Because if you weren't spending enough time with her, and she wasn't able to communicate with you in a way that was getting through, it's not going to work in the long run anyways. So so back to his, because the letter is basically groveling and begging and pleading. And I did stupid letters like this when I was younger and not a, it never worked fucking once. He says, so I send the letter to her and she texts me a few days later asking if she would mind if she called me. So it's like, not only does the, let, the letter basically says that it's all your fault and, 
In other words, you validate her bad choices. You validate, hey, it's totally okay to line up another guy behind my back because it's all my fault because I didn't treat you right. She totally fucking betrayed you, dude. You, the way you got to look at it is she needs to earn another chance with you, not the other way around. And after that kind of disrespect, I would have said, hey, I don't appreciate the fact that you started dating or lining up another dude behind my back, but give me a call if it doesn't work out. And we can talk, but I can't guarantee that I want to get back together with you. So he says, I was like, sure, great. This is what I wanted. Because he's thinking, hey, she's reaching out. So I said, of course. And on the advice of my get my ex back coach, he said that if she is firm in trying out the new guy, that I should ask her to be friends. Come on, man. Friends? Who is this fucking beta male that's saying it's okay to be her fucking friend and in backup position and give all your power away? I mean, where's the self-respect in that move? Where's the move that says, I'm a catch, I'm fucking valuable? You're going to cheat on me and blow me off for another guy and then I'm going to I'm going to be celibate and I'm not going to date until you find find out whether or not you want to be with this guy and tell me whether or not I can move on with my life. I mean, come on. That's ah, I can't believe somebody would say something so fucking weak. And convince her that her friendship is okay between exes just to get into her circle and disrupt her relationship covertly. What a weak-ass fucking move. Whoever this coach is is a fucking bitch. An absolute bitch of a man. That is the fucking weakest, supplicating, bull-fucking Shiite that I've heard in a long time. It's like if you're the catch and you're the prize and she dicks you over... She's got to come to you and apologize. She has to earn you back, not the other way around. I mean, being stuck in friend zone is absolute fucking torture. Yeah, I'm going to give myself blue balls for an indefinite period of time while my girlfriend is fucking some other guy. And whatever she's not getting from the other guy, emotionally, she can call me and I'll be her emotional tampon. Yeah, that's real fucking masculine. Whoever this, this coach is, he put his balls in a fucking box and gave him away a long fucking time ago. Sounds good, right? I was like, no. So she calls, tells me she has a boyfriend, and that he is listening so that he doesn't think she's trying to get back with me or cheat on him with me. LOL, the irony. Yeah, because guess what? Because new, the new boyfriend doesn't feel secure in their relationship because he knew that she was cheating on her boyfriend with him. And now she's going to be friends with the ex-boyfriend? Her new boyfriend is a bitch as well. So I proceed to ask her to be friends. Uh, and she says, sure. But with the understanding that if I text, call, email, etc., with her that she probably won't respond out of respect for her new boyfriend. Yeah. She showed you a lot of respect. I asked to talk to her privately just to get some closure as some things were on my heart. Dumb advice again. She refused and I called her and her boyfriend insecure and clearly having trust issues. LOL, but not good. So I ended the call and texted her that I was shocked that she didn't grant me at least five minutes. You're putting this girl on a pedestal and you're fucking begging her. Oh, man. This is like one of the most emasculating things that you can fucking do. Women can never love a guy that they respect. And you're not doing anything that warrants respect here. And that what she did was very rude, especially as it was a private conversation and she asked to call me. Well, at this point, she didn't have any respect for you because you basically wrote her, an e wrote her a letter and told her it was all your fault. So it is good that she involved her new boyfriend in the conversation, which is more respect than she did for you when you were in the same position. She called me back. We spoke for about five minutes. We're on the bad advice I was given. I again asked for friendship. Told her that exes can be friends as I was on friendly terms with the ex before her and that it wasn't romantic. So you're saying, oh, I'm really going to be okay with being in friend zone. Whew. 
Fucking A. It really isn't, and I am actual friends now with that ex. She grasped at that, and I told her that we didn't we didn't work, not because of a lack of love, but because we didn't sort out past issues when we reconciled the first time. I'd say that last sentence is a true statement. Maybe a little too mushy, and while I never asked her for a second chance, well, everything you're doing is asking for a second chance. You're just begging to be in her life and not to be blown off or relegated to her past permanently. He says, I did say a few other things of a similar nature regarding our past relationship. I ended the phone call, and it's been about a month and a half of solid no contact. I wouldn't expect to hear from her. She's still with her boyfriend, I hear, and I only ran into her once at the grocery store when her kid wanted to say hi. She looked happy to see me and acknowledged me first. I've been working out and losing weight. That's all good things, which you should be doing regardless, whether you're with somebody or not, whether you're single or in a relationship. you got to take care of your fucking body. You can't just let yourself go when you get into a relationship, as well as growing a beard and getting a new haircut. But you can tell everything you're doing is you're seeking her approval. This is not masculine. This is not the kind of behavior. This is submissive feminine behavior. So you're acting like a fucking woman here. That's definitely not going to create attraction. She had a smile on her face, which I'd like to believe was happiness and excitement to see me. But I noticed when her kids started to talk about the new friend and promptly urged him to move along as they were next to check out. So hard to say if it was happiness or maybe stifled laughter of the laughter of the conversation probably overthinking it yeah she might have been internally laughing at what a bitch you had become and she's probably thinking i'm really glad that i broke up with you this this coach whoever you talked to really fucked your shit up dude so anyways my question and potential idea for a video is what if anything is the best thing to do when a lot of us viewers have taken bad advice like this gone through with it and ended up in a similar situation of no results and being on the back burner. Never ever fucking agree to be a woman's friend. All this chick has done since the since she got back together with you and then broke up with you is just one continuous episode of disrespect and all you've done is validate that disrespect as being an acceptable way to treat you. The strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. She obviously knows now that you really want her back. She's not fucking stupid. She's not, oh, yeah, he really wants to be my friend. What you're really trying to do is fly under the radar and hope you can fuck her new relationship up, which obviously she's cluing in her new boyfriend on what's really going on. And by acting feminine instead of masculine, you're ruining any kind of attraction that potentially would have been there. So to answer your question, it's to read my book 10 to 15 times and get out there and start applying it. My book, How to Be a 3% Man. Start applying it. Start meeting and dating new women and learning the fundamentals because you're going to see it's going to in a few months, especially when you start succeeding again and start dating women that are hotter and have a better attitude and keep you interested more than the other one did. You're going to be like, why would I want to go back to that? Why would I want to fucking heat up leftovers? But you know, the reality, dude, is that you weren't into this girl when you dumped her at the end of last year. That's the reality. Even if you got back to, I mean, even when you got back together with her the second time, you stopped putting your best foot forward. Why? Because you weren't that into her. And you only started to care when she dumped you for another guy. Rejection breeds obsession. Even if you did, say she breaks up with a new guy and gets in touch with you, I would highly recommend that you review Seven Principles Get an Ex Back. She's a fuck buddy, friends with benefits material, maybe open relationship material if you're into that. But that's it. She ain't wife or girlfriend material because being exclusive and monogamous, it don't mean shit to her. She ain't happy. She has no problem lying to your fucking face and lining up a new guy behind your back. Make her come to you. If she does reach out and she's single or things are going sideways, invite her to have dinner, make dinner together at your place and hang out, have fun, and hook up. Don't go meet her out. Don't go pick her up. The farthest distance you should be willing to travel to see her is the distance that it takes to go from wherever you are in your house to your front door to let her in. 
If she comes over three dates in a row and you hang out and you have fun, you hook up all three times, then you can pick her up and go out and date like normal. But she's got to do 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing from now on. And whatever you learn from this other coach, you need to just fucking burn the material because that fucking bitch don't have a clue what he's talking about. He's teaching men to be a bunch of goddamn fucking suffocating pussies. That is fucking reality. You don't want to be a fucking bitch of a man. You want to have some fucking self-respect. And you don't get any when you behave this way. He says, I wish I had found your video sooner and made a high-value offer of a relationship and walked away. Well, once you found out she was leaving, it's like I would have said, that's really not fucking cool. Obviously, you weren't on the dating app because you forgot to delete it from your phone. You were doing it because you were looking to date somebody else behind my back. You have violated my trust. I never did anything like that to you, and I don't fucking appreciate it. If it doesn't work out with that other dude, you can give me a call, but you know I may or may not be open to see you. Right now, I really don't want anything to do with you because of the way you behave. You don't have any fucking integrity at all, and I don't appreciate that shit. But if someday you realize the error of your ways and you want to apologize and try to make things right, I'll be open to listen. That's all I can promise. But you know, I'm not interested in dating you as long as you're with this guy or any other dude. And I'm going to assume this is the end of the road for you and I. We had a great run. I had some great memories. And I wish you all the best. And that's what I was said. And I fucking walked away, deleted the number, and moved on with my fucking life. So he says, but I only realize now that the advice I got was bad and then asking to be friends made me look weak. Well, that's the important thing you learned. You learned from this painful experience. But on the flip side, the good thing about this other coach that you talked to was that he pretty much fucked things up so bad that you're probably not going to hear from her again. And what that really does is it eliminates her as a, possibi- as a romantic possibility from your life permanently. And what that does is it forces you to look for somebody new, which if I look at your actions when you were together last year and when you got back together the second time, you weren't that fucking into this girl at all. And if you got back together with her the third time, eventually you're not going to be into her again. And the same shit's going to happen all over again. So now you've got a space in your life to meet somebody new. So if you read and apply what's in the book, Eventually, you're going to attract somebody that's way hotter, way better, has more integrity, and is more fun to be around than this girl ever was. And you're going to look back and laugh at it. Because when I look at my past, I'm not ashamed of it. I, I laugh at it now. It's kind of fucking funny. And I share it because other people can make the same mistakes. And we can all laugh at our mistakes and learn from them and recognize what works and what doesn't work. I haven't heard from her at all since that phone call a month and a half ago and nothing since the run-in a few days ago and I feel as though I've killed my chances. You should assume that it's over and you're probably never going to hear from her again. Thanks for taking the time to read this. I know it was a little long, but hopefully it hasn't inconvenienced you too much. Just wanted to share enough to where you understood what I'm trying to ask. Like I said, read the book, dude, 10 to 15 fucking times you got to learn the baseline fundamentals. You can't just watch a few videos and cherry pick. I had a couple guys I talked to this week in my phone sessions, and they've been following me for a while, and neither one of them even cracked the fucking book yet. They were just cherry picking. They're in the process of trying to get an X back, and it's not going too well for them. Like, I mean, if you don't learn the fundamentals, you can't possibly expect to be successful. So if you, you're in a similar situation and you'd like to get my help personally, somebody that actually knows what they're fucking doing, I mean, you can just Google my name and look in forums and look where people are talking about me, Corey Wayne. Go look at the reviews on my book on Audible. Go look at it on Amazon. I got better reviews than anybody else in the category. I sell more books than anybody. I give way more books away than anybody because what I teach works. So if you'd like to get my help personally, go to my website, understandingrelationships.com. Click the products tab at the top of your screen and book whatever option works for you. And I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 